Avoiding the Kitchen Sink Database. It's a bit of a funny title, but it's a very serious uh, title. I'm a very serious person, like all the French. Uh, and I'm going to talk about app architecture, uh, particularly applied to maybe more like shoebox, shoebox app, where you have a bunch of documents that the user is uh, viewing, and you have a database, typically SQLite or Core Data. It has a, this architecture has a proven track record. At least I've used it uh, for a long time in findings for several years. It even went from version one to version two without making any changes, and it's been used in Agenda now. Um, but to talk about the problem, I'll talk about uh, imaginary app Synchrotron for uh, sync lovers or sync collectors. Uh, table view with a bunch of syncs, and then your favorite sync, you have a detail view. So for such an app, you would have a very simple data model, kitchen sink table, bunch of properties, rating, name, summary. And there you go. But then you run into some performance issue. You want to display the color as a string, not as an array of NS colors. So you have to do some computation there. So you want probably to pre-compute. You add another column with a color string already baked in. Uh, then you want to do sorting, case insensitive, Unicode friendly. You need a normalized string for the name, one more column, uh, then say, oh, you want to filter by, co by color, and you think, okay, I'm just going to add another table, a color table, and normalize my data, have a relationship between colors and things, more stuff into my database. Then I have this Syncipedia website with a bunch of nice APIs to get all this data. And of course, I want to cache it, offline caching, more, t more uh, columns into my, my table. So you end up with what you started with this uh, simple model, right? And you end up with adding all these properties uh, derived from all of this. So basically, really, what you have is the actual data is the white stuff. And everything else, you really added it just for the UI. But it's all in the same database, which also means that, really, uh, this, is, this part is only your critical data. The rest is derived data. You could, it's disposable. You can delete it, and you can create it again by computing it again, which also means that this, is, this data is, only, is the only one you want to back up or that you want to sync, really. And that's part of the issue. Everything else you want to ignore, you don't want to spend resources on this. And so the issue is you, you end up with this kitchen sink database, right, where you have the critical stuff mixed in with derived data that is not as important. And it, get, it can get in the way. Uh, which can be fine, but we decided to uh, actually separate those two data in the app. So that's where we get into app architecture, the actual data versus the UI database. Uh, and the reason we do this is then the data, the actual data, we can optimize for things like data integrity, backward and forward compatibility, backup, sync, like I talked about. Whereas the UI database, you can optimize for things like responsiveness and all these things we talked about, sorting, searching, etc. So you can really focus on uh, what is important for each type of data. Now, to link the two, we have um, a change controller in between. So it listens to changes in the data and notifies the UI database so that it can refresh this derived data and keeps it up to date. The nice thing when we did this was we realized, well, we, this can be used for other things in the app. We have this structure, this work, this flow, where we can also apply it to the search index, to a thumbnail uh, generation, to things like actually we also generate a PDF that auto-updates all the time as the data changes. So it, it gives a really nice architecture for this kind of stuff. And then sync, sync also becomes easier because we can just focus it on the actual critical data and not have to worry about sync everywhere else in the app. So in the end, of course, Problem is you have increased complexity and multiple data stores and stuff like this. But then you also have reduced complexity by separating the data, the UI, separate the cache logic, logic, easier migration, and easier sync. And again, it has a proven track record. I'm very, I've been very happy with it. So I, I hope you think about it. Ask me a question if you want. And thanks for your attention.